to welcome everybody on November 1st. And now we're uh, actually recording. Here we are. Yay. So that's uh, something I'm, I say. Give me, give me a few months and I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> but if not, I know that someone, someone, someone somewhere will, uh, will help me out. Generally Carla, but she's not, not yet logged. She's probably still in her family Zoom that happens right before this, knowing her. Hey, Camilla, I wanted to ask a question on behalf of my brother. <laughs> yeah. He would love to be here more often. Uh, he has a cycling group on Sunday, so he can't be here, but he is missing being able to watch them post it up on YouTube. And he was wondering if there's anywhere else that there's a Facebook page or somewhere where you, where you can watch these recordings? Well, I mean, they should be. It's only that um, it's only from uh, oversight and laziness that they're not all on um, on YouTube right away. Okay. Um, I put, you know, I just uh, there's one that uh, that Carla did. I'm not sure if she got that one up there. And then I get a little bit late about it, but knowing that someone is looking for it, I'll try to be uh, try to do a, a better job of it. Once I once the meeting stops, then it the thing takes about a half an hour to process. And then if I come back to my computer, I see it, and uh, and then I can rename it. And assuming assuming that I don't have to import it into iMovie to remove. Something that I said, something that I sang, that I've had second thoughts about, or or somebody that we talked about, that, you know, some, some form of embarrassment oh, that we. Well, has got a lot of noise going on in there, people. Somebody, oh, I think here. How about if we mute Jim? I think Jim is. Uh, there we go. Thank you. Yeah, I think Jim is the Jim is the noise king there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, though, Camilla. And I, I don't want to make extra work for you, but but he asked me to ask because he he really does enjoy checking them out. So oh, that's good. Okay. Well, that's that's you know that's nice to know. I'm uh, I'm glad. I, know, I, have, I have two Carla. that I still have to. I have two that I have to post from when I was leading, and I want to re-listen to them because there's one that I want to take something out of and. Um, I'm not sure where exactly. Well, anyway, I was just on a family Zoom with my parents, and something's going, something's going funny with their uh, computer. They couldn't get on. I was like on the telephone with them, um, <laughs> and, and they, they, I'm, I'm like, click that link, and then they click it. Nothing would happen. Karen had tried. We thought maybe that the Zoom thing was behind their email, um, you know. Well. Page. I don't, you know, I don't know. I did upgrade during the week to Zoom 5.3 because I was reading something that said that that was a good idea. Um, but I can't imagine that doing that would make it, um, you know, so that nobody could communicate with, with me, but you never know. No, something's uh, going on with them because they couldn't get on the family Zoom. And then I tried to help them get on your Zoom. I sent them a link in many different ways and they'd click on it and nothing would happen. And then they... Uh, they well anyway so they're going to watch the recording okay <laughs> well and i have a couple of friends who are um not jealous slightly envious that i get to do this every week and since they are not camp people um they are fellow writers in my writers group i said well if they post them on youtube you can watch the chat and it's almost like you were there and you could sing along and they went yeah i'll try that so <laughs> Well, they could come, right? Well, I wanted to ask if that was okay. I mean, these are both really amazing women who are great, great writers and, and, and singers. And uh, I just wondered, I mean, it, you know, we have a uh, yes. for group now, but uh, I mean, it's, we're in month eight, guys, working on I, nine. I would years. say, I'd say uh, yes, because any, uh, any sort of new person or, or, you know, reclaimed person or returning person or it's all, uh, it's all lovely. Yeah, it uh, can be um, a parent of campers. It can be, well, like uh, um, Lynn's mom is coming. Okay. Other friend of, kind of yeah. friend friends of. of Norwester. Well, she said she wouldn't know. <clears throat> she knows a lot of folk songs and, but, but she said she just mostly want to listen. And I said, I don't think there's any law against listening, but I'll ask Camilla and Carla and see what's up. But yeah. Okay, cool. 
Yeah, I, I, uh, I belong to a, an, a group that's not meeting these days, but uh, that plays music, um, the Sunday Night Jammers. And, uh, <laughs> and we started we started playing at the at the Contra Dance Hall about eight miles away. Um, every every Sunday night, we've been playing since uh, about 2004. And pretty much our, um, you know, our attitude is, yeah, anybody can come and play. We play from sheet music, so people have to understand that. And um, and really, the only the only person who who came um, and didn't work out was a person who um, who wanted us to sing um, sort of religious and spiritual oh. chants things with a lot of sort of short repetition. And that was like her offering. And we were all like, uh, you know, this is yeah. the one thing. That and one guy who played, um, who, well, certainly people who brought a whole drum set, that didn't work for us. <laughs> that was way too much noise. That would uh, be a lot for a little mic yeah. computer. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but otherwise, over the years, uh, the answer has always been yes. and. Certain, you know, there's sort of a, a backbone group that's always there, and every once in a while, there's you know, there's 15 people on the stage, and and once a month we do this uh, this free contra dance, and we have a couple of people who are callers, and and uh, and anyone who wants to try being a contra dance caller can be there at the Sunday Jammer dance and a potluck beforehand, and that's so uh, great. I yeah. Love so and and the and um, Zemaratik and the Salty Dog Rag and all of those uh, all those dances. Um, but but so just well, just thanks to for say saying that. that. Everybody, I, I everybody's invited. Why not? Well, I, yeah. And and my friend, uh, this is my friend Stephanie Kalis. She's the one that wrote Language Arts, the book that my movie's based on. And she's a genius and you know it'd just be really cool to have she sometimes just gets a little lonely like we all do and would like to listen to some people talking and singing so cool well, mu hey, musical I, is usually like on a day when visitors come to camp too that's so, what i was thinking i mean you could I think mean, or you know they could come and visit like a normal day at camp too just yeah. perhaps they would and then they would hear the singing and it's a more inclusive kind of thing than the more the normal camp experience musical so thanks guys yeah. Yes. So, so yeah. So just forward that, uh, forward that link. I just did. Yeah. <laughs> try to when keep the, the, try to keep the number. I, tr I try to keep the number the same, but that doesn't always happen. But so. one thing I've noticed about all this mask wearing is like my nose is all shiny on the tip. It's, I'm going to have to get some powder or something. Carol, your <laughs> nose always was shiny on the tip. No, 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 not like this. Not. <laughs> I know, I'm just remembering you when you were nine. You know? I know, but I mean, like when, you're, when you got this mask on and your nose gets nicely polished by the stop fabric all day long, or I mean, for the time that you're wearing it, yeah. Yeah, I am the least mask wearing person that you will probably know in this pandemic because I just sit here <laughs> and, and am in the garden here i'm just yeah like, I, I don't wear the, my mask very much because i don't go out oh, i don't have a city to go out into <laughs> i'm not uh, I'm, I'm home a lot however you'd be surprised how nice a shiny polished nose feels oh yeah it's cute it's, like, it's, it's adorable so by the way guys if anyone's in the islands on august 21st 2021 um we will be having a wedding in my backyard and uh, what we're going to do is the wedding's just for family, and then we're going to open it up to a full island party if it's post COVID. If not, we're going to live stream it. We have plans for both. So it's almost a year from now, you know, we'll see what happens, but uh, we might be doing a live streamed uh, country wedding. So Wonderful. if anyone's around in August, if, if it's post COVID, you never know. But, you know, what was funny was. The bride, my almost daughter-in-law, uh, called around on the island. There are no caterers. There are no florists. There's no nothing available because everybody's trying to get married in summer of 2021 that put it off this year. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, good thing we're having it in the backyard, huh? Yeah, and that we can cook. So, yeah, because, you know, the venues are all booked. There's, you can't rent a thing on this island. Isn't that interesting? Wow. 
Yeah, everybody's like, okay, we put it off a year, we're gonna do it. And then of course it might be punted, we don't know. Makes perfect sense though. Start looking at flower seed catalogs. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> well, thank goodness I happen to know Ellen Helsel, who has oh, yeah. her garden is like seriously nine times the size of mine and a lot of it's floral. And I'm going to go, hey, Ellen. Wow. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Just help her garden throughout the year, I'm sure. She'll say yes. Oh, I help. We help each other because we're good neighbors. We're just right across the street from each other. And my, my yeah. tiny horse lives on her land. So we're, we're good neighbors. Wonderful. Buy yourself a big freezer and just start cooking every weekend. <laughs> we have a standing big freezer on the porch because we can't fit it in the little house. So we're good that way. It's going to be interesting. Do you have one of those? Uh, one thing that I've really uh, that uh, I have brought into my life lately that is a big help is a vacuum seal food thing. I do not have a vacuum sealed food I, thing. They're wonderful. It, okay. It's in, for the for uh, camping yes. for camping yes. I've started doing that when I know that we're going to be camping um, I take the leftovers from a meal and freeze them into like uh, a little hockey puck shape and then um, and then I then I uh, vacuum seal them and then I can and they're there and they and because they're vacuum sealed everything lasts way longer than if it's uh if it's not airtight good so. to know so yes we are 20 minutes into this and julie very wisely types are we going to play music <laughs> <laughs> sure why not julie, uh, said, says to julie you said you would sing something yeah i can't remember what it was you said you would sing but i remember i have you said three you things would... yeah oh, wow. so no. why don't we start you start off with you Sounds like a plan. Yeah, so I, I, I thought we were going to do kind of um, Protest, more in yeah. peace, peace songs and anti-war songs this week. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. I, I hope so, because that's what I prepared. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, the first song I'm going to do is called The Green Fields of France. And this is a, so a song that um, basically is talking about the um, the consequences of war uh, from the standpoint of someone who's sitting by the grave of, of a young man who died in this in this war. Um, so uh, kind of sad as all anti war songs are kind of are but it's a very it's a classic and it's very pretty. It's called the green fields of France. <clears throat> Well, how do you do, Private William McBride? Do you mind if I sit here down by your graveside and rest for a while in the warm summer sun? Been walking all day and I'm nearly done. I see by your gravestone you're only 19. You joined the glorious fallen in 1916. Well, I hope you died quick, and I hope you died clean. For Willie McBride, was it slow and obscene? Did they beat the drum slowly? Did they play the pipes lowly? Did the rifles fire roar you as they lowered you down? Did the bugle sound the last post in chorus? Did the pipes play the flowers of the forest? Did you leave a wife or a sweetheart behind? Is some loyal heart is your memory enshrined? And though you died back in 1916, to that loyal heart, are you forever 19? Or are you a stranger without even a name, enshrined forever behind a glass pane, in an old photograph torn and tattered and stained, and fading to yellow in a brown leather frame? 
Did they beat the drum slowly? Did they play the pipe slowly? Did the rifles fire or you as in the word you done? Did the bugle sound the last post in chorus? Did the pipes play the flowers of the forest? Sun shining down on these green fields of plants. The warm wind blows gently and the red poppies dance. The trenches have vanished now under the plow. No gas, no barbed wire, no guns firing now. But here in this graveyard, it is still no man's land. The countless white crosses in mute witness stand to man's blind indifference to his fellow man and a whole generation that were butchered and damned. Did they beat the drum slowly? Did they play the pipe slowly? Did the rifles fire or you as they lowered you down? Did the bugles sound the last post in chorus? Did the pipes play the flowers of the forest? I can't help but wonder, young Willie McBride, do all those who lie here know just why they died? Did you really believe them when they told you the cause? Did you really believe that this war would end wars? Oh, the suffering, the sorrow, the glory, the shame, the killing and the dying, it was all done in vain. But for Willie McBride, it's all happened again. And again, and again, and again, and again. Mm. That was beautiful. Was so beautiful. And tragic. I used to, so tragic. <laughs> I used yeah. to listen to the Clancy Brothers record of that when I was a little kid, and oh, I just cried. It's so good. Thank you, Julie. I've never heard it. Oh, yeah, uh, I think Peter, Paul and Mary do it. I, I heard I knew their version. It's a it's sort of an Irish trad song. A lot of Irish trad singers sing it. It's so good. On one of the Gordon Bach albums, it's sung but by not by Gordon Bach, by one of his um, singing friends. Hmm. So who else has one of those songs? Oh, Alex. Yeah, I've got a couple songs I could do today. And I said last week I'd do Freedom Land and sorry for the confusion. I guess it's called I'm On My Way, but same song. my boss 
to let me go. I asked my boss to let me go home. I asked my boss to let me go home. I'm on my way, great God, I'm on my way. If he says no, I'll go anyhow. If he says no, I'll do anyhow. He says, no, I'll do anyhow. I'm on my way, great God, I'm on my way. I'm on my way, and I won't turn back. I'm on my way, and I won't turn back. I'm on my way. To freedom land. I'm on my way to freedom land. I'm on my way to freedom land. I'm on my way, great God, I'm on my way. Oh, I loved that one back in the day. Thank you. That was so beautiful. And I love hearing your guitar too, Alec. Um, so I was practicing a, a Phil Oaks song, uh, There But For Fortune. So let's see. Here we are. Here we are. Turn it on. So how many people know about Phil Oakes? Phil Oakes, um, born in 1940, and uh, he died in 76. Um, he was uh, 35. Um, he was, he had, um, he was bipolar, um, sort of lived a, a life of a, a wild musician and had an amazing voice um, and uh, was a real uh, amazing poet, but uh, had a real hard time getting, getting a hold of his, uh, his life and um, took his own life at, at 36. But, um, but he wrote some, um, some amazing songs and very, uh, very edgy, very, um, very angry. Um, um, I believe that, um, that Joan Baez, um, helped make this song pretty well known, um, there, but for fortune, um, cause, uh, I think it was a little harder for Phil Oakes to actually bring out his own, his own songs just cause it was, had a hard time living his life. Um, but, uh. There's a lot of a lot of him and a lot of uh, of um, of videos of him on the internet, and he's really a uh, really interesting person to uh, to listen to. Very very sharp, um, passionate, uh, beautiful voice, beautiful voice. Uh, and uh, one of the things I learned about him today was um, that he had sort of a short you know, meteoric rise and fall. And then um, later on, he, want, he came out with an album called um, Phil Oaks's Greatest Hits, um, which was really a joke title because he didn't have any greatest hits and it was all original music. Um, and, but, but it was confusing to his audiences and uh, confusing to him and confusing to his, publishers and confusing to all the, the sorts of people. He, he um, at, in the depths of his depression, one of, one of his, um, I guess his friend or his agent, somebody took him to, to see Elvis. And it was El in Elvis's later years, but, um, but uh, Phillips was so taken with the 
silver, the, the lame costume that he decided that's what he needed to do. So he made several uh, um, appearances wearing this silver costume and really trying to change and trying to sort of channel his inner, uh, inner Elvis. It's, it's, really, uh, it's really just interesting finding out about him. But, uh, but anyway, um, this, is a, this is a song that just uh, paints a really haunting picture of, um, of homeless people. Show me a jail, show me a prisoner whose face is growing pale, and I'll show you a young man with many reasons why. And there, but for fortune, go you or I. Show me an alley. Show me a train. Show me a hobo who sleeps out in the rain. And I'll show you a young man with many reasons why. And there, but for fortune, go you or I. Show me the whiskey stain on the floor. Show me the drunken man as he stumbles out the door. And I'll show you a young man with many reasons why. And there, but for fortune, Go you or I. Show me a country where the bombs had to fall. Show me the ruins of the buildings once so tall. And I'll show you a young land with many reasons why. And there, but for fortune, go you or I, or I. Beautiful. Thank you so much. That was gorgeous. Wow. Thank you. Mm. <clears throat> well, I was working on a song this week that I've never sung before. Uh, it's the uh, Fiddle and the Drum by Joni Mitchell. <clears throat> when I was about nine years old at camp and I started learning the, the guitar and then at home I took guitar lessons, a classical guitar, but also, you know, we did chords and stuff. And the teacher said, you have to get this Joni Mitchell album and this Joni Mitchell songbook. And that was probably about the time, right when it came out, you know, so I did. And, um, but the only songs I pretty much sung from there were like both sides now. 
but this one is a little different. And so once again, my dear Johnny, my dear friend, and so once again, you are fighting us all. And when I ask you why, you raise your sticks and cry and I fall. Oh, my friend, how did you come to trade the fiddle for the drum? You say I have turned like the enemies you've earned. But I can remember all the good things you are. And so I ask you, please, can I help you find the peace and the star? Oh, my friend, what time is this to trade the handshake for the fist? And so once again, oh, America, my friend, and so once again, you are fighting us all. And when we ask you why, you raise your sticks and cry and we fall. Oh, my friend, how did you come to trade the fiddle for the drum? You say we have turned like the enemies you've earned, but we can remember all the good things you are. And so we ask you, please, can we help you find the peace and the star? Oh, my friend, we all have come to fear the beating of your drum. Beautiful. Wow. Oh, thank nice you. Job, Carla. Oh, I've never <laughs> heard that one. I never heard that either. It's wow. on the album, it's on clouds. It's on clouds, yeah, I remember. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm. There's a lot of beautiful songs on there, but the one that we usually just sing is like both sides now, you know. Woo. Good job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very nice. <laughs> well, since I have three total, maybe I'll jump in and do another one. Good idea. Excellent. <laughs> uh, the next two songs I have are both by Tom Paxton. And um, this one is, is very satirical. It's written from the standpoint of somebody who's a gung-ho soldier and he wants to know how to kill people. And throughout the song, what Tom Paxton is really saying is that it's really awful to kill people, <laughs> but, it's, but it's very satirical, so. Sergeant, I'm a drafty and a, whoop. Okay, sorry, need to, need to start again. Sergeant, I'm a drafty and I've just arrived in camp. I've come to wear the uniform and join the martial tramp. And I want to do my duty, but one thing I do implore, you must give me lessons, Sergeant, for I've never killed before. To do my job obediently is all that I desire. To learn my weapon thoroughly and how to aim and fire. To learn to kill the enemy and then to slaughter more. I'll need instruction, Sergeant, for I've never killed before. Now there are several lessons that I haven't mastered yet. I haven't got the hang of how to use the bayonet. If he doesn't die at once, am I to stick him with it more? Oh, I hope you will be patient, 
for I've never killed before. Oh, there are rumors in the camp about our enemy. They say that when you see him, he looks just like you and me. But you deny it, Sergeant, and you are a man of war. So you must give me lessons, Sergeant, for I've never killed before. The hand grenade is something that I just don't understand. You've got to throw it quickly or you'll have to lose your hand. Does it blow a man to pieces with its wicked muffled roar? Oh, I've got so much to learn because I've never killed before. Oh, I want to thank you, Sergeant, for the help you've been to me. For you've taught me how to slaughter and to hate the enemy. And I know that I'll be ready when they march me off to war. And I know that it won't matter that I've never killed before. And I know that it won't matter that I've never killed before. Wow. Right? That's what we do to soldiers. Yeah, that is what we do. We take people and make them kill people. It's awful. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. I'll do one tin soldier. Yay! I love that one. <laughs> Listen, children, to a story that was written long ago about a kingdom on a mountain and the valley folk below. On the mountain was a treasure buried deep beneath the stone and the valley people swore they'd have it for their very own. Go ahead and hate your neighbor. Go ahead and cheat a friend. Do it in the name of heaven. You can justify it in the end. There won't be any trumpets blowing come the judgment day. On the bloody morning after, one tin soldier rides away. So the people of the valley sent a message up the hill asking for the buried treasure, tons of gold for which they'd kill. Came an answer from the kingdom with our brothers, we will share all the secrets of our mountain, all the riches buried there. Go ahead and hate your neighbor. Go ahead and cheat a friend. Do it in the name of heaven. You can justify it in the end. There won't be any trumpets blowing come the judgment day on the bloody morning after. One tin soldier rides away. Now the valley cries with anger. Mount your horses, draw your swords. And they killed the mountain people, so they won their just reward. Now they stood beside the treasure on the mountain dark and red. Turn the stone and look beneath it. Peace on earth was all it said. Go ahead and hate your neighbor. Go ahead and cheat a friend. Do it in the name of heaven. You can justify it in the end. There won't be any trumpets blowing come the judgment day on the bloody morning after. 
one tin soldier rides away. Mm, thank you, Lynn. So good. It's mm, a great song. Mm. Well, I could do, uh, last night I had the strangest dream. Please do. Last night I had the strangest dream. I, oh, that's too high. Last night I had the strangest dream I ever had before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. I dreamed I saw a mighty room. It was filled with women and men. And the paper they were signing said they'd never fight again. And when the paper was all signed and a million copies made, they all joined hands and bowed their heads and grateful prayers were prayed. And the people in the streets below were dancing round and round. And swords and guns and were scattered on the ground. Last night I had the strangest dream I ever had before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So good. Uh, if only. Mm. This is a this is a song I sang a few weeks ago, but definitely in the uh, anti-war vein. Um, I think that it was made into a song by John Gorka. I think that let let them in. Um, I learned it on a David Wilcox album. Let them in, Peter. They are very tired. Give them couches where the angels sleep. Light those fires. Let them wake whole again to brand new dawns fired by the sun, not wartime's bloody guns. May their peace be deep. Remember where the broken bodies lie. God knows how young they were to have to die. God knows how young they were to have to die. Give them things they like. Let them make some noise. Give dance hall bands, not golden harps to these our boys. And let them love Peter, for they've had no time. They should have trees and bird songs and hills to climb. The taste of summer in a ripened pear and girls sweet as meadow wind with golden hair and tell them how they are missed and but say not to fear. It's going to be all right with us down here. Let them in, Peter. Let them in, Peter. 
Let them in, Peter. Da, da, da. Love that song. I love Wilcox's version and Gorka's version, and I love your version. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, oh, so beautiful. It makes me cry. Poor, poor Corey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So shall I do one final one? Well, Alex has one too. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Do you want to go no, first? Go ahead. All right. So uh, after we picked our theme a few days later, I was driving home and this came on and I haven't heard it in a million years and figured I should learn how to play it for this. Good news is it only has three chords, which is right in my repertoire. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played it before. It's a little pedestrian, but here we go. <clears throat> oh, it's called For What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield. <laughs> There's something happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there telling me I've got to beware. I think it's time we stop, children. What's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. There's bad lines being drawn. Nobody's right. If everybody's wrong, young people speak in their minds, getting so much resistance from behind. It's time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. What a field day for the heat. A thousand people in the street. Singing songs and a carrying signs. Mostly say hooray for our side. It's time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. Paranoia strikes deep into your life, it will creep. It starts when you're always afraid. Step out of line, man, come and take you away. It's time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going. Hey, better stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. So good. Oh, Alex, yeah. that was beautiful. Wow. Nice. I did. I never listened to the words closely enough. I've known that song for years, but I never realized what it was saying because I yeah, never too. listened well enough. Thank you. Corey, do you have a poem or something for us? Uh, yeah. Give me what. Somebody else go, and then I'll go. Let me get it. Let me get it. Okay, I'll sing a song for Corey because it has a horse in it. This popped into my head when we were talking about war songs too. I think we must have sung this as weavers or mariners or something too. I read on internet, it was um, written like in 1902, something like that. Two little boys had two little toys. Each had a wooden horse. Gaily they played each summer's day, soldiers both, of course. One little chap then had a mishap, broke off his horse's head, wept for his toy, then cried for joy when his, his young comrade said, did I think, did you think I would leave you crying when there's room on my horse for two? Climb up here, Joe will soon stop your crying. We can go just as fast with two. 
when we grow up we'll both be soldiers and our horses will not be toys maybe then we'll remember when we were two little boys long years passed war came so fast bravely they marched away <clears throat> cannon roared loud and in the mad crowd wounded and dying lay up rose a shout a horse dashes out out from the ranks so blue galloped away to where joe lay then came a voice he knew did you think I would leave you dying when there's room on my horse for two? Climb up here, Joe will soon be flying back to the ranks so blue. Can you feel Jack and Maul a tremble? Perhaps it's the battle's noise, but I think it's that I remember when we were two little boys. Oh my God, I haven't heard or thought of that song in years. That was awesome. Me neither until last week when we started talking about this and I was like, oh, oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Nice job, Carla. This brings back so many songs to our memory that we hadn't thought of for a long time. Yeah. It's fun. It's good. And, you know, I mean, we were, some of us here, okay, all of us in this call, <laughs> were, were children in the 1960s. And that, I mean, maybe not Lynn, she's, she's a baby girl, but but yeah. you know and and it, alex but anyway a lot of us in this hall were children in the 1960s and that is a formational thing for the rest of our lives that we were born and raised in a time of great foment and great upheaval and great <laughs> protest and and people waking up kind of like now you know i mean this is a time of great chaos and foment and and waking up uh because the whole world is going what the heck and you know that I was saying that earlier to some of you who were here that the sermon that in my online church this morning was about how do we allow the foment to bring forth a new birth of something good rather than just saying, I want to go back to the way it was. How do we make something new and beautiful together as a, a planet? How do we use this, this dissonance to make a, a beautiful thing? And, and so, um, because the way it was was only good for some, not for bingo, everybody. Bingo, right. And so, so this is, uh, I'm focusing in my private spiritual practice on trying to be a, a force for that, for the new thing that will be hopefully better. So, um, okay, I've got two poems. Uh, one is mine and one isn't. The war one is called The Irish in Gallipoli by Francis Ledwidge, <clears throat> where Aegean cliffs with bristling menace front the threatening splendor of that Isley sea, lighted by Troy's last shadow where the first hero kept watch and the last mystery shook with dark thunder, hark the battle brunt. A nation speaks, old silences are burst. Neither for lust of glory nor new throne this thunder and this lightning of our wrath waken these frantic echoes. Not for these our cross with England's mingle to be blown on mammon's threshold. We but war when war serves liberty, justice, love, and peace. Who said that such an emprise could be vain? Were they not one with God who strove and died? Let Ireland weep, but not for sorrow. Weep that by her sons, a land is sanctified and angels once again come back like exiled birds to guard their sleep. And the one that I, I make a poem a week or two, a couple of poems a week and some of them are worth looking at. And, and I think I'm gonna work on this one a bit more. So this is just a sketch guys, sorry. It's not about war because I just wrote it about something, but anyway. Uh, it's called Digging Up Breakfast. I make a green smoothie. 
from carrots, kale, cucumbers, and long red chard. They grow close to my home, behind a deer fence, nestled in loamy humus, so their roots can go down and down and slowly digest the forest. When I pick them, crunching the kale stalks, tearing free the charred leaves, popping the sweet round yellow cucumbers off the vine and tugging up the carrots, I can't help but grin. I knock the dirt from their roots, letting it fall back into the raised beds. I carry them humming to wash in the sink and chop and drop in the blender, their green scent frothing over me as I grind them. No matter how large the rocks are that I must try to lift and carry each morning, I can still give thanks for the enlivening food that comes from the dirt outside my door. Beautiful. I'm working on it. <laughs> Great pictures. Very nice. Does Next. Julie have any more for us? I would not be shocked if she did. <laughs> you you or I will I wouldn't want to shock you all. <laughs> I can't have that. Please sing again. I have one more song also by Tom Paxton. Um, again, it's, it's sort of subtle um, as an anti-war song. And it's, it's basically talking about his son and the mental effects, the, the emotional effects that war has on people. I can, I can only imagine, you know, you, you hear a lot of times, you know, people come back from war and they just, they just don't talk about it. Um, you know, my, my husband's father was in the Korean War and the job he had had something like a life expectancy of three minutes. Or, you know, it was, it was just horrible. And he never, never talked about it. You know, and I think that's pretty typical. And that's what this song is about. My son John was a good boy and good to me. When we had hard times, well, he stood by me. We were in work and out of work and on the go. If he had complaints, I never heard of one. He would pitch in and help me like a full grown man. My son, John, John, my son. My son John went to college and he made his way. Had to earn every penny, but he paid his way. He worked summers and holidays and through the year. And it was no easy struggle that he won. But he laughed at the ones who thought he had it hard. My son, John, John, my son. My son, John, got his uniform and went away. With the band playing marches, he went away. And he wrote me a letter when he had the time. He was losing his buddies one by one. And I prayed and tried not to read between the lines. My son, John, John, my son. My son, John, came home yesterday. He's here to stay. Not a word to his father have I heard him say. He seems glad to be home, but I can't be sure. When I asked him what he's seen and done, he went up to his bedroom and he closed the door. My son, John, John, my son, he went up to his bedroom and he closed the door. My son, John, 
John, my son. Oh, that's just gorgeous. Oh, he's not generally that subtle. You're right. Generally, he's a little more on the nose. That's really amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Very sad. Tragic. Well, as you know, as you guys have probably noticed, I don't sing in public, at least not solo, but I'll just um, give you some food for thought. Um, today, you know, my daughter, who's 22, who um, has been brought up with the Gould, uh, you know, uh, anti-war, <laughs> non-violence kind of thinking, she said to me, Mom, you weren't, uh, you weren't old enough to protest the Iraq war, were you? I mean, the Vietnam war. <laughs> 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 so it's, you know, it's interesting how, you know, the, the wars of our times change and, but it's all the same. It just keeps yep. going and sucks. And <laughs> yeah. Maybe next week a more upbeat topic. <laughs> well, next week we will have all survived Tuesday and we will be in a new space of one kind or the other. And what if we focus on songs of forwardness, songs of hope, <laughs> you know, what do you, something the like next, The next step. The next step. Yeah, not necessarily a chapel like we, you know, but what do you think about kind of just let's let's go for the uplift? Next, next Songs of Hope, I love it. Songs of Hope, okay. Songs I will I will actually be out um, visiting my other my third sister, the third right. sister next week. I hope I hope she'll let me tune in. We'll see. I'll I'll come up with something and bring my guitar and make make her sing with me. <laughs> oh good, that'll be delightful. Where yeah. does she live? Uh, Buffalo. Wow, that's a ways. Yeah, about, probably about seven hour drive. Yeah, that's far, I know. <laughs> we can sing all the songs we know about Buffalo and the Erie Canal and things like that. <laughs> and my gal, my, <laughs> my old mule, her name is Sal. Yeah. <laughs> miles, yeah. But there's another one, isn't there? Oh, there are a couple. Um, yeah. Buffalo girls, won't you come out tonight? <laughs> come out tonight. <laughs> come out tonight. <laughs> Dance by the light of the moon. You can sing that one next week. There we go. We can't because we have curfew in Belgium. To ten o'clock to six o'clock or something. Oh, like but you can do anything you want in your house. Yeah, and I do. <laughs> I do admit to walking the dogs. I walked them in the moonlight last night and saw a fox. Um, oh. To the, and there's so few, you know, cars or no people really around at that time now. So the fox is well a little more bold than usual. That they was went my, out on starry night. Right? Yeah, and the, 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 the full moon. And yeah. well, it was a similar thing happened in the morning of yesterday morning. Was that I looked out my upstairs window and saw in my neighbor's um, yard was a swan, like a full size, but a juvenile kind of. I saw that swan. picture that you had. Yeah. <laughs> and I went over and rang her doorbell and like, there's a swan in your garden. And then we <laughs> called a um, local ornithology guy. And he came and it really made me think of the fox because he we're like, well, don't you need some protective clothing or what are you, you know, he just came on a bicycle and he had like a <laughs> feed sack under his arm. And <laughs> and no. he said, no, je l'habitude, you know, no, I'm used to it. I, I, I do this all the time. So he wow. went out in her backyard and he literally like grabbed the gray goose by the neck he walked up <laughs> to the swan, and the swan went like this and he went grabbed it by the neck and tucked it under his arm like a bagpipe. <laughs> <laughs> then he got it on the ground and sort of knelt on it in a way so he could, you know, put a, um, a what do you call it? A band, a, a band on its uh, yeah. leg. And then he just kept it, you know, folded back like that and slipped it into the sack and put the sack under his arm and walked off to the <laughs> local pond a little ways further you, know? you are like, sounds like the stuff of a great uh great song yeah you know? yeah my well, friend apparently... yeah. there my was friend a, a swan in with... my neighbor's yard well my friend that i walk with every sunday who's going to be here in seven minutes she's she's an ornithologist and she works with the government as a bird rescuer 
So yeah. she's constantly getting calls on Orcas, where she lives with, you know, at the other end of the island with me. Um, and is, she's constantly saying, yeah, you want to go watch me catch a insert bird here? And I go, yeah. And she does that exactly what she does. <laughs> wow. All the time. She also has a net, which is, yeah. you know, but she has bags and nets and, and cat carriers and all this stuff always in her car. And she's wow. always going out and like helping critters. It's wonderful. And yeah, so it is zabitude, you know? <laughs> I mean, she's like, yeah, let's go do this thing. There's a loon that's stuck in a net. Let's go or whatever. Yeah, wow. So yeah, please sing the Thank fox you. next week, Carla. Oh, the fox. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's fox. perfect. It's getting to be a chilly night and, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And Ellen's, yeah. Ellen's uh, chickens are very well fortified there, but still it's a little worrisome sometime when they're all out, yeah. those chickens. Like, are, there, there are, are there fox on orcas? No, but no. A, do you recall the mink? Oh. Because some idiot in Deer Harbor had a mink farm and then they got out? Uh, we have yeah. mink. They are nasty weasels. Those have you ever smelled them? Oh yeah. my God, they smell Kidding. terrible. And you know, the raccoons love them too. And yeah, we have some predators, some feral We've had lots of foxes running around my neighborhood in Seattle, actually. And more, yeah, there's more, more, more obviously because it's become quieter in the streets, but yeah, there are sightings everywhere. We never yeah. had possum and fox in Seattle before 10 years ago. It's just weird how- There were yeah. coyotes, there were always coyotes, but apparently there's a lot more coyotes now. Yeah, And I never saw possum, but my parents said there were possums around. We never had house. those kids, you know. Well, we we yeah. have possums around here. And for a while, my shared wall neighbors, the people living there, let their weeds grow up to like shoulder high and it became, mm -hmm. Nicholsville for rodents and I don't know if you guys know what Nicholsville is yeah. but we used to have a mayor here and uh, that's when uh, homeless camps started be to be set up very prominent ones and they called them Nicholsville and so my next door neighbor became Nicholsville for rodents and I was out in my backyard late one night and this possum came under my fence from rodent Nicholsville like hanging out my yard just staring at me yeah they're around up They're here on Orcas, we have rodent nickels fill whether we mean to or not, because the field mice will take over your house the minute you walk out of it. They just, they find a way in, they make nests, there is a thing. So the people in that house went to town for three weeks, as is their want, and came back <laughs> two days ago <laughs> and found literally like rampant field mice in all the drawers, up on the counters, like mouse poop wow. everywhere. And they were like, you didn't go in our house? And I'm like, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do in your house? I mean, no, I cook in my house. Why would I, you have a better oven, but why? So, you know, it's like, well, I guess we'll have to put out traps. And it's just like, oh, you cannot win up here. They ate my car, I told you that. They ate my car, the mice. <laughs> they ate it. Just nibbled away at all the little they rubber ate pieces. all of the wires in the car. Mm -hmm. $2,500 worth of Let's fix the car. Thank you very much. Thank God for insurance. I paid 500, but still it happens all the time up here. They just eat your car. Well, see, here's a new cottage industry for Orcas is, is uh, <laughs> when people go away, you'll go in their house and just make noise. Make and noise. you'll just deter bring my cat. the field mice. You'll bring your cat, bring your cat. Yeah. Bring your cat. Two cats in this house, they don't dare. <laughs> right. I should just Look. let them lose in there. I like that the neighbor blamed you. <laughs> one of those, one of those pharaoh hounds. Yeah. You know, those, those pharaoh hounds are supposed to be pretty amazing. Uh, this this person who's my Facebook friend and uh, she, you know, she she has to uh, if if she if if her dogs see a squirrel, they are faster than the squirrel and they'll get it. And they'll you know, so they're they're very. Uh, they're not not super reasonable dogs. Okay, Julie says imagine. Who's gonna sing Imagine next week? Oh, I am. Yeah. Okay, Julie, great. Yes. Love it. Okay, we've got some great inspiring. Oh, blowing in the wind, Carla. That's great. I've got yeah. one. I'll sing next Let week. Let there be peace on somebody earth. Somebody else can do it though. That's a good want. one, Camilla. Let yeah, there be yeah. peace. This will be great. Earth. That's a good we'll, one. We'll, hope we'll be either celebrating or mourning, but what we will be doing is lifting each other up next week. <laughs> I have a strong suspicion we might be still in limbo by next week. Yeah, that's why, you know, liminal time, we're all in this weird in-between liminal time for like a year now. 
yeah, it we're used to it. And that can be a little stressful on the adrenal system to just be always in the middle of, you don't know what. It will definitely show up. It we will definitely show up. Limbo boy and girl all Bring around it. the limbo world likes to do the limbo rock <laughs> all around the limbo clock. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jump under limbo stick. Every night and every day, got to swing the limbo away. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> You're All a right. font of wonderfulness, Camilla Stringer. That's what you are. <laughs> There's got to be a song. Whatever yeah, it is. There is. Well, everybody, I got another huge flush of mushrooms. I got to go make mushroom risotto. That's a uh -huh. terrible thing. Uh -huh. I know. I've had that I keep getting mushrooms. It's, it's amazing. It's definitely yeah, morel season over here too. Hey, uh, friend, we're, we're growing shiitakes and oysters. But I got to leave you all. Hopefully my sister Anne will be agreeable and I'll see you next week. Sounds and good. You know what, Camilla, you could advertise, like if we have a theme, you could like advertise that on the yeah. Facebook page and say, you know, this week we're going to be singing songs. Bring your songs of hope and inspiration and then maybe people will think about it and maybe they'll bring their songs you know that's advertise she, our little themes maybe that's, that's, that's what, bring that's people she back did week, julie she did that this week and she's been doing that it's very oh, she lovely. did oh but, um, okay well obviously i'm dumb early, and didn't like, notice <laughs> do it do it really like tomorrow or something you know so i'll try that or a couple of yeah. times yeah but the, the week goes by so fast Thanks, that you think oh i'm gonna do this early on and then next thing you know it's already that oh morning. i know huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, have, yeah. a, have a great week i hope we're all really happy next week see you yeah, later let's hope so. i i made brownies you can all come over for brownies <laughs> okay <laughs> bye bye, bye. bye. Thank you. Much love.